Welcome back to Psylosophy, the channel where we explore the intersection of science and philosophy. A few months back, we looked at the teachings of Eckhart Tolle and put his teachings under the microscope. In today's video, we'll analyze another charismatic spiritual leader, Muji. Is Muji a spiritual con artist or a science-backed genius? We'll have a look at the science and philosophy behind his teachings. But before we do, remember to subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Let's dive in. Muji, born Tony Mu Young, is a spiritual teacher who gained popularity for his teachings on self-inquiry and non-duality. Many followers claim to have experienced profound transformations through his guidance. To begin our exploration, let's delve into the foundations of Muji's teachings. Born in Jamaica and later finding his spiritual path in the West, Muji draws inspiration from various spiritual traditions particularly emphasizing the concept of non-duality. Non-duality posits that there is no fundamental separation between the self and the universe, challenging the conventional dualistic view of existence. Muji's teachings often revolve around self-inquiry, encouraging followers to question the nature of their own consciousness and to seek a direct experience of their true selves. Critics argue that such teachings are abstract, and lack tangible evidence. However, Muji's followers attest to the transformative power of self-inquiry in breaking down perceived barriers between self and reality. Now let's bridge Muji's teachings with the realm of neuroscience. Recent studies on meditation, a key component of Muji's practice, have shown fascinating connections between contemplative practices and changes in brain function. When individuals engage in meditation, particularly those centered around non-dual awareness, there's a notable shift in brain connectivity patterns. Neuroscience suggests that regular meditation can lead to increased connectivity in brain regions associated with attention, self-awareness, and empathy. Moreover, a decrease in activity in the default mode network, responsible for mind-wandering and self-referential thoughts, has been observed. Could Muji's emphasis on non-duality and self-inquiry be triggering such neurobiological changes, contributing to a heightened sense of interconnectedness reported by his followers? It's important to note that while these findings align with aspects of Muji's teachings, the scientific community continues to explore the intricacies of the brain-mind relationship. This prompts us to question whether the observed neurological changes are a direct result of non-dual practices or part of a broader spectrum of meditation-related effects. As we navigate the interplay between spiritual teachings and neuroscience, the question remains, is Muji a spiritual guide leading his followers towards profound experiences grounded in science, or is he weaving an intricate tapestry of beliefs that may lack empirical validation? Moving forward, let's explore another facet of Muji's teachings, the emphasis on mindfulness and emotional well-being. Muji encourages his followers to cultivate awareness of their thoughts and emotions, promoting a state of mindfulness. Scientific research has shown that mindfulness practices can have tangible effects on mental health. Studies suggest that engaging in mindfulness can lead to a reduction in stress, anxiety, and symptoms of depression. The practice involves bringing one's attention to the present moment without judgment, a concept that resonates with Muji's teachings on being present. By integrating mindfulness into his spiritual guidance, could Muji be tapping into a scientifically supported approach to enhancing emotional well-being? It's intriguing to note that mindfulness has become a focal point in psychology and therapy, with various therapeutic modalities incorporating these practices to address mental health challenges. This raises the question of whether Muji's teachings which include mindfulness as a key element, are contributing to the well-being reported by his followers. Central to Muji's teachings is the concept of presence, the idea of being fully immersed in the now. Research in psychology has explored the benefits of cultivating a present-focused mindset, shedding light on how it can positively impact mental health and overall life satisfaction. Studies indicate that individuals who regularly practice being present experience increased positive emotions, reduced stress, and an enhanced sense of fulfillment. Muji's emphasis on presence aligns with these findings, 
suggesting that by encouraging followers to let go of past and future concerns, he may be guiding them toward a state of mind associated with greater well-being. As we delve into the science and philosophy behind Muji's teachings, it's crucial to acknowledge the potential intersections between spiritual guidance and evidence-based practices. By integrating elements such as mindfulness and presence into his teachings, Muji may be offering his followers a path towards emotional resilience and a more fulfilling life. However, the challenge lies in discerning where spiritual guidance ends and scientific validation begins. Now, as we navigate the intricate landscape of Muji's teachings, it's crucial to address the criticisms and controversies that have surrounded this spiritual leader. Despite the reported benefits and alignment with certain scientific principles, Muji has not been immune to skepticism and concerns from both critics and former followers. One prominent criticism centers around the lack of empirical evidence supporting the effectiveness of Muji's teachings. Some argue that the transformative experiences claimed by his followers might be subjective and not universally applicable. Without concrete scientific validation, doubts arise about the authenticity and reliability of Muji's spiritual guidance. Additionally, Muji has faced accusations of fostering a cult-like atmosphere within his community. Former members have come forward with allegations of manipulation, control tactics, and a stifling of dissenting voices. While these claims are contentious and disputed, they highlight the challenge of navigating the fine line between spiritual leadership and potential exploitation. As we explore the controversies, it's essential to acknowledge that the assessment of spiritual teachings goes beyond the realm of scientific validation. Personal experiences, beliefs, and interpretations play a significant role in shaping one's perspective. The question then arises, can we separate the potential benefits derived from Muji's teachings from the controversies that surround his leadership? In our pursuit of understanding Muji's place in the realms of science and philosophy, it becomes crucial to critically examine both sides, the reported benefits and the raised concerns. By doing so, we can approach the question of Muji being a spiritual con artist or a science-backed genius with a more nuanced perspective. In conclusion, Muji's teachings seem to touch on aspects that align with scientific findings on mindfulness, brain function, and emotional well-being. However, it's crucial to approach spiritual teachings with a discerning eye, considering both the potential benefits and any controversies. Whether Muji is a spiritual con artist or a science-backed genius, the answer may lie in the complex interplay between personal experience and scientific understanding. Thank you for joining us on this exploration of Muji's teachings. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep seeking the truth here on Psylosophy.